this is Juan from JuanTutors.com. Welcome to my totally free office hour. Uh, today we're working on the August 2016 New York Geometry Common Core Regents, problem number 34. Uh, if you want to access these exams anywhere in the world, go to nysedregents.org and click on the appropriate tabs. So here's the problem. As modeled below, a movie is projected onto a large outdoor screen. Uh, the bottom of the 60 foot tall screen is 12 feet off the ground. I do look at the, the picture while I'm reading, so 60 feet, 12 feet, so this is probably the ground. And the projector sits on the ground at a horizontal distance of 75 feet from the screen. Okay, so then determine in states of the nearest tenth of a degree the measure of theta of the projection, which is the projection angle. Okay, highly recommend that you pause the video right now, try the problem on your own, see if you get the same answer as us, and if you do, uh, definitely hit the like button uh, to let us know, and also subscribe, because uh, uh, that, you know, uh, that helps us out, and, and we're providing more videos in this class, and Algebra 2, Trig, Bio, Chem, Physics, a lot of, a lot of courses, so take, uh, keep a look out for those. Here's what we do. Uh, first off, we notice that this angle is pretty small. Everything looks like it's drawn to scale. This 12 looks like it's about a fifth of 60, maybe not quite, but very close. This 75 looks like it's about the same height as this triangle, maybe a little bit bigger, which is what it should be. So this angle should be fairly small. It's definitely less than 45 degrees. Uh, and so if we get an answer that's beyond that, like very far beyond 45 degrees above, or also just too low, like two or three degrees, we know we did something wrong. So let's see, we do, we do know that we have this angle theta, which is our goal, right? But we don't know the measure of angle Go away. Okay. Sorry, uh, we don't know theta. And we also should recognize that this triangle containing angle theta is not a right triangle. So if we try to use uh, the like Pythagorean theorem or sine, cosine, or tangent on that, we won't succeed. Uh, there are methods involving, for example, um, the law of sines or the law of cosines, which you may have been taught in geometry class, but you're definitely going to be taught in algebra two trig that do uh, work for this problem. And those methods are legal; they are legit for this uh, test. But um, let's see, we know this angle and this angle do uh, appear in this diagram. And the benefit in considering those angles is that they are part of our right triangle. This is the right angle for each of those angles, for the, each of those uh, triangles. So this angle, I'm going to call this uh, angle uh, X, and I'm going to call this angle Y, okay? So now I'm going to look at the triangle containing angle X. This has this right triangle. It's the big outside right triangle. This this bottom side has length 75, and the height of the triangle is 72. Okay. This 72 is opposite to angle to angle X, and this 75 is adjacent to angle X. So I use tangent. So tan of X is equal to opposite over adjacent over adjacent which is equal to 72 over 75, okay? So how do I get x out of this? I use my calculator, x is equal to tan inverse, okay, and of 72 over 75. And I noticed that 72 over 75 is very close to one, so uh, I know that tan inverse of that is gonna be close to uh, uh, 45 degrees. Okay, now I'm gonna leave that for a moment. Uh, I know a lot of kids are fan of plug, fans of plugging in now into the calculator, uh, but I'm going to leave it now because this is an exact answer, and I'll plug into the calculator later. The only thing I was going to tell you is to make sure you are in degree mode always. Radians are simply another way of uh, defining an angle measure. If they're not like degrees, they're just a totally different angle measure. Like one degree is a very small angle. It's actually really hard to keep my hands one degree apart. The moon in the sky is half a degree wide. Whereas, so that, that gives you two moons, one on top of the other is one degree. Uh, whereas a radian is actually a pretty big angle. It's like that. It's, it's, uh, that's the amount of distance that, that if you hold your fists out in front of you, Ten, uh, six fists is is about a radian. That's a much bigger uh, size than a, than a degree. It's it's actually about uh, radian is about 57 degrees. But that's beyond what this course is is dealing with. We need to be in degree mode on the calculator. 
Now, the Y, this angle Y, let me switch to, to red. Um, so this angle Y, okay? So this angle Y is part of this right triangle, which has a side opposite 12, so, and a side adjacent, which is also 75. So tan, we use tan of Y is opposite over adjacent, which is equal to 12 over 75. Okay, so how do we get Y out of it? We go, go Y equals tan inverse of 12 over 75. So now using the angle addition postulate, I see that, uh, let me redraw this. This is uh, angle Y. I see that angle theta is equal to, uh, um, let's see, the full angle X, but minus this extra angle Y, okay? Uh, or in other words, if you wanted to do it by the angle addition postulate, as opposed to subtraction, Y plus theta equals X, and then you solve for theta. So we put these uh, in the formula. Let's see, X is tan inverse uh, 72 over 75 minus uh, Y, which is tan inverse of 12 over 75. I like putting them into the calculator now because if I, if I did that earlier, I might get a rounding error when I round to the nearest tenth. So I go tan inverse. Now you see tan is here. So tan inverse is in blue. I press the blue second button, then I press tan to get tan inverse. 72 divided by 75. Okay. Now y is 12 over uh, tan inverse 12 over 75, or rather tan y is 12 over 75. That's a number that's very close to zero. So theta should, uh, I'm sorry, y should be very close to zero, uh, relative to you know 90. So maybe 5, 10 degrees, or 15 degrees at most. So when we subtract these two angles, we should get something you know slightly below 45 degrees, 40, 35, 30, or something like that. So let's see, 10 inverse 72 over 75 minus. Now the reason I talked all about all that stuff is that when I do math, I try to reason out what the answer should look like before I get an answer because it helps me to verify that what I did was correct. And then if my answer doesn't match what I suspect it should match, then I'm either my thinking was wrong or my math is wrong. And one of those, either whichever happens to get corrected is a massive benefit for me. Uh, let's see. And in fact, theta is equal to, as we suspected, slightly below 45, so 34 uh, point. And then seven, the next number is a four, so seven stays the same. That is the full answer. Now, what if I had rounded 10 inverse of 72 over 75 and then rounded 10 inverse 12 over 75 and then subtracted that? Well, sometimes you get unlucky and, and not always, but sometimes you get unlucky and the, the rounding error happens to give you an incorrect rounding. Like you'll, you might get 34.8, uh, which, uh, you know, it depends on the test if they're going to take away points for that or not. So you want to be careful. So if your goal is just to get that answer, then definitely hit the like button and then go on to the next test, but, uh, but the next problem. But we did create an extra problem for you to practice on. Uh, see if you can get this answer. This is one that's much more doable with the, with the law of sines or the law of cosines. But if you don't know the law of sines or the law of cosines, you can also get it via other methods. And we're going to use other methods today. Uh, and maybe as, uh, well, we're going to use other methods today and let's see what we get. Definitely pause the video, try it on your own, hit the like button if you get it. I know, by the way, subscribe because we got a lot more coming. Uh, so in the figure below, red triangles P, Q, R, and P, R, S are similar. Hmm, nice. And the measure of angle P, Q, R, P, R, Q equals 30 degrees, and P, Q equals five. Find the length of Q, S uh, to the nearest thousand. Okay, pause the video, try it. Let's see. I know that I see PQ is 5, and I know that the measure of angle thir uh, PRQ is 30. Okay, now P, uh, QS, I'm sorry, QS looks like it's maybe 3, 4, 5, I don't know. It's hard to tell, but it's definitely significantly bigger than PQ. But it's not going to be 50, because 50 is like 10 times as big 
as as PQ, which should be something along those lines. So I should I should get something between 20 and 30 maybe for the length of QS, uh, maybe a little shorter, maybe a little longer, uh, but not something like 10. 10 is going to be too short, 50 is going to be too big. That's a big uh, deal. Now I have a pretty solid reasoning of what the answer should look like. So now I know the triangles are similar, so this is a 60 degree angle. Uh, and that means that this angle is also 60, uh, 60 degrees and that this angle, angle, the measure of angle PSR is equal to 30 degrees. So this is a special right triangle, 30, 60, 90 right triangle. Now I'm going to go in blue and get the derived measurements. Uh, this is 5 radical 2, radical 3 over, no, I'm sorry, 5 radical 3. PR is equal to 10. So QR is equal to 5 radical 3. PR equals 10. Sorry, my hand is a little sloppy today. I have neat days and sloppy days. So let's see. So now uh, RS, RS is equal to uh, 10 radical 3. Uh, and then PS is equal to 20. So we've got a lot of measurements, 10 radical 3, and PS is equal to 20. And I already see, since PS is 20, QS looks like a little bit bigger than uh, PS. And this diagram does look very, very much drawn to scale. So I should expect now that QS is going to be hidden 25-ish, probably a little bit smaller. We've gone so far. That just geometric intuition is going to allow us to check our answer in the end. If we get something bigger than 20, close to 25 possibly, between 20 and 25, we know the answer is going to be correct. So how do we do this though? It's like, what? I don't see anything necessarily uh, initially uh, using my usual skills uh, to, to get QS. I don't see any right angles, that any right triangles that QS is a part of. So it's like, what do I do in this case? Well, uh, what I've what I did to when solving this, I mean, initially I used the, the law of signs. Uh, I know that this angle, that QPS is 60 plus 60 is 120. So I could actually, I'm sorry, not the law of signs, the law of cosines. So I could actually use the law of cosines to, to get QS. But since we don't know that necessarily in this class, I'm going to use something else. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a vertical from S and I'm going to drop a horizontal from R and I get a red triangle here, and I'm going to call this point, uh, let's see, I have PQRS, how about T? Okay, so now I'm going to call RT, uh, let's see, X, I'm going to call RTSY. Now, how do I get RT? So this, this triangle, this is 30 degrees, this is 90 degrees, so here is 30, 90 minus I'm sorry, 180 minus 30 minus 90 is 60. So this is also a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so let's see, adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, I'm going to get x, so cos 60, which is equal to 1 half, is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is equal to adjacent is x over hypotenuse is 10 radical 3. So a half equals 10. I'm sorry, x over 10 rad 3. Uh, so I know the kids love cross multiplying, so I'm going to do that. But I don't really need to cross multiply. I know x is going to be 5 rad 3. 1 times 10 rad 3 is 10 rad 3 is equal to 2 times x divided by 2, divided by 2. And I get uh, x is equal to 5 rad 3. So I'm gonna put. I'm gonna erase this x, and I'm gonna put. Oops. I'm not gonna erase the x. I'm gonna put five rad three. Uh, now I need y. Uh, let's see. So I'm gonna use tan. I'm gonna use cosine y. So cos. I'm sorry. Cos sixty is equal to uh, opposite. I'm not cos sixty. Sine sixty. Sine sixty because it's opposite. Opposite over hypotenuse. So radical th uh, 3 over 2 is equal to the opposite y over uh, hypotenuse is 10 rad 3. 
I multiply both, both sides by 10 rad 3. I know you, you kids love to, to do cross multiplication, but I'm not going to do cross multiplication in this case because it's not necessary. Times 10 rad 3. And I get, let's see, I get y is equal to 10 rad 3 times rad 3, so 10 times 3 over 2, which is equal to 30 over 2 is 15. So this is equal to 15. Okay? So, what can I do here? Okay, so QT, QT is equal to 5 rad 3 plus 5 rad 3 is 10 rad 3. ST is equal to 15. So by the Pythagorean theorem, uh, with, with right triangle QST, I have, so the Pythagorean theorem, Uh, on triangle QST, I have the length of the legs uh, QT squared plus the height ST, which is another leg squared, is equal to the hypotenuse QS squared. So I take the square root of both sides and I plug some numbers in. Okay? So let's see, now that I can scroll, so QS is equal to plus or minus because it's the square root, but, it, the, but we're getting a length, so it's positive. The square root of QT is 10 rad 3 squared plus ST, which is 15 squared, okay? So 10 rad 3 is 100, 10 rad 3 squared is, 10 squared is 100, rad 3 is, squared is 3. 15 squared is 225, and this is equal to 300 plus 225 is 525. Okay. Uh, and then I needed, uh, this is the exact answer. I can always factor out the, uh, the perfect squares. 25 is a factor of 525. Uh, its factor pair is 21, so this is equal to 5 radical 21, that's the exact answer, but they actually asked the answer to the nearest thousandth, okay? So, let's get that to the nearest thousandth, okay? So, on 525 is not a perfect square, so that's the best we could do is take a radical. 5, 2, 5, enter. And we got 22.91287. So 22, slightly bigger than 20, exactly where we expected, between 20 and 25, slightly, even slightly closer to 25, which, which matches my intuition. So 9, 1, and then the next number is a 2. The following number is an 8, so we round up to the 3. Okay? So that's QS. Okay, and we are absolutely finished with this problem. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you understood what, what just happened. Uh, it's uh, it's meant to be it's meant to be a challenging problem. You might have to read the problem four times or so to get just even a basic grasp of what's going on. The trick of, of drawing this auxiliary auxiliary line is a very useful tool for for higher level math in in, in calc uh, A B and calc B C and it's also somewhat useful a little bit useful in algebra two trig. Dep and depending on how high level your teacher is, it could be it could be very useful. So hopefully you understood what we did. Uh, it's uh, it's a definitely a very tough problem, but you know uh, the reason we're here is to is to you know to help you. So hopefully we did help you. If we did, uh, we definitely appreciate you hitting that like button and subscribing because you know we have a, a lot coming. Uh, and I look, I know you can do it. Keep working at it. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video starting right now.